Well, a planned televised leaders debate focused on foreign policy has been officially cancelled now because the Liberal leader, Justin Trudeau, is refusing to take part. The Monk debate had been scheduled for October 1st. The three other major party leaders had agreed to attend. Rudyard Griffiths is the chair of the Monk debates and he joins me now. Uh, Mr. Griffiths, good to see you again. Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Likewise, Peter. The Prime Minister has made it clear for some time now that he would only be doing the two commission debates and another French language debate on uh, Channel TVA in Quebec. So I, I guess the question is, why did you wait until today to call off your debate? Mm -hmm. We uh, began this process almost eight weeks ago with a formal letter of invitation to all the parties, including the Prime Minister and um, the other three opposition leaders who we invited. That letter indicated that today was the cutoff date for um, a reply. Uh, we had not, uh, over those eight weeks, uh, had any official word from the Liberal, Liberal Party as to whether they were participating in this debate or not. So the clock ran out, and we are unfortunately now in a position where we've had to uh, cancel for 2019 uh, the only leaders debate that would have focused exclusively on Canada's foreign policy challenges. Right. Did, did, so I gather then it sounds like you never got a formal response from the prime minister's office. So you, how did you I mean, he didn't answer the, the, the formal request, but you, you must have had a pretty good idea along the way that chances are we're not looking good that he'd show up. We always knew that, uh, that, you know, the challenge would be convincing the prime minister to participate. We were hopeful, though, on the basis of his very strong performance at our debate in 2015. Uh, we all remember at that debate, it, in some ways, uh, a turning point for him in that campaign, establishing his, uh, you know, prime ministerial uh, bona fides. Um, I think that combined with uh, some real foreign policy accomplishments over the last four years, uh, plus compared to the other opposition leaders, his familiarity, his deep knowledge of the international environment, of the key uh, global leaders, uh, all those things I think were real assets or strengths that he could have brought into this debate. And we were hoping that uh, he'd be thinking about them too and uh, his advisors, and that might have been the tipping point to uh, get all of us to yes. Uh, and to have allowed this debate to proceed. But to be clear, there were, there were no discussions with uh, the Prime Minister's office uh, be, beyond the issuing of the formal invitation. There were never any conversations about how it might or could work. There was just radio silence. We never received the courtesy of a reply. Okay. Uh, earlier this month, uh, as you know, McLean's and City TV went ahead with uh, their debate, even though the Liberal leader said he wouldn't show up and, and didn't. Uh, we carried that debate here on CPAC, and we were intending to carry the Monk debate as well. Um, I guess some people are wondering, then why not go ahead with your debate without Justin Trudeau, since the other party leaders were willing to show up? Yeah, fair question. I think if we were in McLean's shoes and we were doing a debate that was covering the waterfront of Canadian political issues from health care to the economy uh, to the environment, then maybe an opposition-only uh, debate would have made sense. But, you know, foreign policy is uh, overwhelmingly the purview of our prime ministers. It's how our system is set up. Uh, Justin Trudeau has had a disproportionate impact in shaping Canada's foreign policy position on the world stage. So I think by our debate and by virtue of being an issue-specific debate, uh, I think that that really um, made it a, uh, regrettably, a fairly easy choice for us ultimately not to proceed on the basis that we wouldn't have the main protagonist that we needed for this debate uh, on our stage to give the public the benefit of a rich, sub substantive and in-depth uh, uh, conversation about Canada's foreign policy challenges. Yeah, let, let me follow up on that. What do you, what do you think is lost uh, to the Canadian voter by not having a leaders debate that is focused solely on foreign affairs? I think one of the great innovations of the 2015 election campaign is there wasn't just our foreign policy debate issue specific. There was also a Globe and Mail debate that was specific on the Canadian economy. And I, I think, uh, you know, uh, Canadians voters saw value in that because those debates allowed us to go deeper. It allowed us to really pressure test these leaders on a vertical, so to speak, a kind of knowledge policy vertical. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I really do wish the debate commission the best, but it's going to be interesting to see how in a two-hour debate, uh, the single and only English language debate with six leaders on stage and five moderators, you're going to have a substantive and serious conversation about anything, uh, let alone uh, foreign policy.
Uh, let, let me follow up on that. Ju Ju Justin Thoreau has suggested the last election saw Stephen Harper uh, try to game the system to make sure that the fewest number of Canadians were watching debates because there were no big consortium debates. Uh, but Justin Thoreau back then took part in all of them. Uh, it, uh, is this new system better? And I think I got a sense of what you're concerned about in it already, but uh, it was supposed to open up the process, and do you think it will? Yeah. Well, look, I, jury's going to be out between now and when this commission debate happens, and I really do wish them uh, the best in, in delivering the public service that Canadians need in terms of a, a meaningful debate. I, I will say, though, that this is a very peculiar solution that we've come up with. We, we have, in a sense an incumbent government, uh, a prime minister running for re-election, who, while he was in power, set the rules for the debates that we're now having in the writ period. I, I don't know what you think, but my, I, I don't know, that makes me a little uncertain. I, I'm not so sure it's a good thing that we open up the writ period to, in a sense, uh, I mean, again, hopefully everyone did this with the best of intentions, but there's also political agendas at play. We know this. Uh, to allow a government before the writ period to actually shape and craft an important aspect of how that writ period unfolds, most notably the debates. And I think this prime minister, understandably, for all kinds of political reasons, is using the commission, uh, frankly, as an excuse not to do other debates like the McLean's debate or, or our debate. So the result is that we're going to go from 2015, where we had five debates, three of which were in English, to only three debates, of which only one will be in English. And I think those numbers just tell a story that uh, we've taken a step back and that maybe this commission is not the solution uh, that those, had, uh, those of us who had hoped coming out of 2015 uh, that it would be. All right, and, and, I, and I guess there's some, some concern around this whole notion of cherry picking. If the, when, when Justin Trudeau says, look, uh, Stephen Harper was gaming, gaming the system, so we're going to have the commission debates, and, and that's the ones I'm going to do, but then I'm going to do this other one over here at TVA that's yeah, not exactly. one of the commission debates. Yeah. If that's the case, why doesn't that open it up to do other ones exactly. beyond the TVA and, debate? And maybe the solution at the end of the day is to have a commission, but let's have a commission that says, okay, you know what, it's not just two debates, it's four debates. I, we don't have to hold the foreign policy debate at the month debates. I'd be happy if the commission did it. We don't have to hold a debate on the economy at the Globe and Mail. Uh, the commission could do that. But why, again, did we end up with only two debates? I think voters have to, two official debates. Why do voters, you know, are, why are they left with that? I think that's a fair question to ask. All right. Uh, well, we'll see how it all unfolds in the next few weeks. Uh, always good to talk to you, Roger Griffiths, Likewise. from the Monk Debates. We'll talk again. Let's do it.